is my video on router and router safety and router operation in the workshop. Routers are one of the most versatile tools in a woodworking shop. They can be used for a variety of tasks from decorative joint construction or just decorative edge work. Every workshop should have at least one and depending on the productivity output of the workshop, maybe more than one. Routers can take a square boring edge and add decorative decoration to it. Change bits and you can make a, a locking groove for a side of a bookshelf. A lot stronger than glues, glue screws and nails. Another set of bits can create a locking yet decorative joint for frame and panel construction of all the doors you see in most cabinet construction today. Another type of bit is a dovetail, which that creates a decorative yet strong, almost impossible to break joint on drawer and box construction such as you know, uh, drawers and jewelry boxes. Routers have a variety of setups. There's hand routers, and there's table routers. Hand routers are, again, come in a variety of different configurations. Uh, I don't have one available to show you at this particular time, but they make a laminate router, which is basically a Dremel on steroids, one-handed, generally uh, for doing trim applications, laminate trimming, small routing. The standard router is typically three-quarter horse to Two horse somewhere in that range, and they have there's a variety of them. The removable base. There's a different brand that has a fixed base. It actually, it's called a fixed base router, but it also uh, the base is not removable, as in this situation. Three horse motors. I, again, I do not have one available. But a three horse motor is generally designed for mounting in a homemade built type router table. The routers have a couple of different collets. Routers work on a system similar to chucks, like in a drill bit. However, instead of on a chuck or for a drill bit or a drill press, it only grabs in two or three places. Routers have a collet, is what it's called, that grabs all the way around. The better grip, less vibration, and they come in two different sizes in most of the routers. Quarter inch shaft and half inch shaft. Quarter inch can be used in your smaller routers. Trim work, edge profiling. The larger routers are for, for doing larger bit, raised panel, cope and stick joints. Very large router, high horsepower requiring bits. A little more stability. The, addition, the, in, the additional feature to having a larger collet is that the bit will heat up less, it has more mass to dissipate the heat. Uh, there's another type of uh, router called a plunge router. It, it again has a standard base that's attached that the motor allows it to go up and down. This works great in applications such as mortise and tenony, tenony making, sign making, Applications where you need to start in the middle of the board or end in the middle of the board and tipping the router on a fixed base type of router would actually cause you to lose control. That router will work best for you. Depends on your applications. Uh, for example, this blue router here is only a quarter inch uh, shaft router. It's not changeable. If I'm doing just edge work, that might be my router of choice. The cost reflects on this. It's a little bit less expensive. The Industry choice would happen to be this model here with a removable base. It's about a one and a half, one and three quarter horsepower general duty router. The advantage of the removable base is you can actually go out and purchase a second base. Build yourself a homemade router table with a plate such as this one is here on the top. Right here is a manufactured router table, however, uh, built several just like it. Uh, from scrap material in the workshop. The advantage of this type of router table is I have taken an extra base and the motor removes. I can slide the motor out and I only am required to have one motor to have two types of router tables. So again, the advantage of that, but on the flip side, the cost is reflective. Well, here are a couple different types of router tables. There's a third kind that I really don't have in front of me, but this is a good example also. This is a manufactured router table. You could also make a homemade one just like it. Uh, when you build them homemade, you can build them so they're benchtop models, 
or you can build them as a full standing cabinet. The cabinet allows for a little bit of stability, larger router bits, things like that. The smaller benchtop model is for if you're in a garage workshop or space is uh, limited portability. This one again is a, uh, there's two types of manufacturers or two types of router tables. This one here, the one on my right, the it's called a router shaper, which means the router and the uh, motor are one, a router and table are one unit. These are not separable. The advantage to this type is the features are more easily accessible. Like up here in the front, it's a lot easier to raise and lower the bit. I don't have to go up underneath the cover. It has a reversible motor for riding uh, uh, over the top versus underneath. It has dust collection built into it. The homemade router table version or a, or a less expensive manufactured version, you have to get a router plate, mount it to the router, attach a base. And again, if you have a one base router, like for example this, this brand here, it's not removable. I have to dedicate this router entirely to this table. By having the removable base, I can take my motor and go from the router table when I need it to the to a handheld base when I need a handheld router. So that's my suggestion. Do what you feel uh, your applications are necessary of. For example, if the budget doesn't allow, just go with a fixed base router. If the budget allows, uh, use a removable base or buy a, a dedicated router table. First couple rules I want to discuss or procedures refer to just general router safety. They apply to both the router table and the handheld routers. You want to always use good, clean, sharp bits. The best way to do this is to purchase a kit. Uh, economically, bits are expensive. Buying them one at a time, they're usually a better economic value to buy them in a kit. As they get worn out, you can send them out to be sharpened. If they're carbide tip, make sure you buy carbide tip router bits. They're a little more expensive, but they're worth it in the long run, the longer lasting, cleaner, better cuts. Anytime you're changing the bit, unplug it. Of all the tools, if you wanted to be lax on a rule, this is not one of them. The way some of the road routers are set up is you can actually rotate the bit or rotate the entire unit during the changing process because they do, do get pretty stiff. I mean, you got to break them loose with a couple of wrenches sometimes and you can rotate it onto the switch. And at 12,000 RPM that would not be a good thing for that thing to come on when you have your hand on a wrench. The final general rule you want to follow is make sure you understand and read any type of manual or instructions that come with your routers. They all change bits a little bit differently. They all have different switch locations, different speeds, how to adjust the speed. But knowing how to use your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of injury. And there's no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. However, in addition on the router, it is an extremely noisy tool. So invest in hearing protection if you're going to be using it for more than just a one or two cuts. In fact, I've invested in a pair that have a microphone built into them and keep the decibel level at a constant safe decibel level so I never have to actually take these off during uh, routing. The last thing you want to think about is a dust mask. You're producing a lot of chips, a lot of dust, and a lot of times you need to be right down at your work level to see what's going on for, for stopping during a mortise or sign making. So you're, you're going to have your face nearby. A face shield wouldn't actually be a bad suggestion either. But definitely a pair of glasses, dust mask, and hearing protection is all recommended when you're using the router.